the Lord, folks. Greetings to you from the States in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Firstly, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning into every episode of Divine Vision without fail. I'd like to inform you that this is the 15th episode of Divine Vision, all to the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and also because of all you people watching it. I also request you to extend your support and your prayers in helping us in our future endeavors and in making this episode a great success as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Feels like it's been months of mine. Feels like it's an uphill climb. Sometimes I get weary on the way. Then I look back at where I've been. Then I look back, I'm sure of it. Outside there in your arms and I can say Every moment of my life God, you never left my side. Every valley, every stone. You were there, you were there. I don't need to know what's next. You'll be with me every step. Do it all, do it all. I can say you carry me. Matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, dearly beloved brethren, the great privilege of God once again standing in front of you to speak the word, word of God and to share the love of God with you all. I thank God the Most High and I also thank my father, later Reverend Dr. K. Y. Kripalam, for the wonderful way he led me to walk in the ways of the God Almighty. The Lord Jesus Christ whom I'm serving and whom millions and millions of the believers serving the living God. We give all the glory, praise unto the name of Lord Jesus Christ. As you know pretty well that we are all in the Lenten days, the days uh, of commemorating the Lord's crucifixion. That's well and good. But uh, what is important is that how well that you have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, how well that you have been uh, imparted by the blood of Jesus Christ is the topmost uh, important, dearly beloved brethren. And uh, before we get into the actual part of our meditation today, shall we just make a small supplication unto the Lord, Lord Almost. Give all the glory, praise in the name, Father. Lord God Most High, I give all the glory, praise unto the name, Father. We thank the Lord Jesus from the bottom of our house, the way that has been guiding and shielding, leading us, Lord, uh, as the will is, Lord, our Father, penetrating us, the kindness and the purpose, Lord, for the be manifested. O oh, Master, Lord, hide me, Lord, reveal the purpose, be reaching to the untold millions outside, and the, let the mission be carried out, the will and purpose, the loving kindness be showered into the hearts of the people. We give all the glory, praise unto the name, in Jesus' most precious name, 
I ask these things. Amen. Dearly beloved brethren, the subject that I have prayerfully brought to our meditation today is the oath of the Lord. The oath of the Lord. If you look at the text taken from the book of Ezekiel, 36th chapter, 9th verse to 13th verse, you'll find God speaking to the mountains there. Ezekiel was a young prophet. He was the son of Booz, and you know, he was a prophet in the period of exile. But they were all taken into the captivity on the land of Babylon while they were there yet in the captivity. God spoke to the man of God that was Ezekiel. And God revealed him how he is going to deliver his people and how he is going to rebuild the people. All that been revealed to the man of God, Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, in the times of the captivity on the banks of the river Kebar. Dearly beloved brother, and if you look at quickly, what all the supplications and what all the God's uh, promises towards his people that he declared to the mountains of Israelites and the land of Israelites. If there is a very strange God speaking to the mountains, it is not... Uh, the first time, every time God speaks to the nature, God speaks to the mountains, God speaks to the creation because he being the creator, he wants the creation be his witness for all his burden and for all his mission, dearly beloved brethren. Here also, he's speaking to the mountains. If you look at the mountains, we have so many mountains in the book of scriptures. We have the mountain of Gilboa where Saul and his people were just uh, met with the ruins. And, you know, you have the Mount of Sinai, where all the people of God received the commandments of the God. And you also have the Mount of Join. Today, we are not called for, to the mountain of Sinai, but we are called to the Mount of Join. In the book of Hebrews, it is very clear and it is manifested that the mountain of join is lifted high up and today we are all called to the mount of join and that is to come and years to come at the end times uh, the god is going to rule from the mount of join dearly beloved brethren as a part of that uh, he is giving oath to the people of israelites he's speaking to the mountains oh ye mountains you shall shoot forth your branches and yield fruits, for they are about to come. And he says, you shall be filled and sown. And thirdly, he says, your cities shall be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. So in this scripture portions, look at from 36th chapter, 9th verse to the 13th verse, God's promises, God's words were revealed to the mountains of Israelites. Why he was speaking to the mountains? As we just already meditated, being the part of his creation, he's calling the mountains and he's assuring the mountains that he's going to make everything wonderful in the days to come for his people. Because mountains were the part of the creation, but the better part of the creation was the man which was created in the image of God. Dearly beloved brethren, today, why God created all this creation? Why God created mountains, rivers, land, lakes, oceans, and the space? It is all just to be ruled by the man. Man is empowered over all the creation because man is made in the image of God. All this creation is for the sake of the man, but man is for the sake of the creator. Dearly beloved brother, today God is reminding you, whatever you may be, whatever you may be, and whatsoever that you have been doing, but God's purpose in your life is top most important. You need to recognize what God plans towards you. If you don't remember that, God is reminding you that God wants you for his purpose. You are not to work for your own purpose, but you are to work for the purpose of God almost, 
Almighty, the God Most High. Dearly beloved brother, that's the reason why you find out the three supplications. Quickly we go one by one. The first and foremost supplication or the thought of God here with the book of Ezekiel is, he says to the mountains, O mountains of Israel, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches and yield fruits. This is the first oath. You look at it. Whenever the oath, the very oath means the promise is going to be fulfilled, dearly beloved brethren, you make so many oaths in your institutions, in your professions. You know, doctors make an oath before the beginning of their career and profession. Whatever the oath that is made by the respective people, that is to be fulfilled. If that is very cocksure, even with the worldly and earthly people, how much more it is effective when a oath done by God. Dearly beloved brethren, here is the oath by God most high to the people of Israelites, but he's not giving the oath to the people, but he is giving the oath to the creation, that is the mountains of Israelites, because he wants them to be a witness. The nature and the creation, he wants them to be a witness, dearly beloved brother. In the book of Isaiah also, he calls the sky and he calls the earth, O oh sky, O oh earth, listen to me. I bring forth my children, but they are rebellious. They are not hearkening my instructions. He pleads, the creator pleads to the creature, dearly beloved brethren wherein you can understand the very burden, very heart-rendering burden of God Almighty towards each individual. You can easily understand. Dearly beloved brethren, that's why he is very much concerned about you today. The individual that is you, he is very much cared for. He is very much concerned for. He wanted you to repent. He wanted you to turn to God right now before it is too late, before it is high time. For he is preparing great wonders in the days to come. Great miraculous things for the sake of you alone, dear liberal brethren. There's a reason why he is uh, giving an oath to the mountains one day my people are going to come here, O mountains of Israelites. Don't be disgraced. Don't be disgraced. The people, my people, they are about to come. They're about to come. By the time they come to you, what will be your promise? You shall shoot forth your branches and yield fruits and yield fruits. God's concern is to fruit bearing, fruit bearing. He wants us to be fruit bearing. Dearly beloved brethren, foot bearing demands forbearance. Forbearance means patience. You need to be patient and you need to be very much struggling. The way and the path of Lord is very much struggling. You know, the path that is stretched before us is the path of crucifixion. Means you need to take your cross every day and follow Jesus Christ. He says, whosoever that wants to follow me must deny this wall and take his own cross and follow me closely. You know, dearly beloved brethren, today many people are following, but you know, they're not denying the world. You need to deny the world. You need to deny everything. You need to hate everybody. Even Jesus Christ says to hate your mother and father, wife and husband, children, he that doesn't hate the world, he, doesn't, he that doesn't hate all this is not called for me. Jesus Christ says, what does it mean by? Your first priority must be to God and God alone, dearly beloved brethren. What is your faith today? Well, how are your fruits today? You may be a very well Christian. You may be a wonderful orator, but the Lord is demanding you to be fruit-bearing, dearly beloved brethren. The Lord's call itself to be fruit-bearing to others, 
to be beneficial to others. Every time the fruit is nourishing, the fruit is good, the fruit is a gift from God. Dearly beloved brethren, like a tree which gives everything for the sake of the mankind, God also, the very innate nature of God is to give and not to take. Man wants to take everything from God in return. He doesn't give his heart even. But he goes on telling everything false. But God demands you to be fruit bearing today. That's the reason why he's asking the mountains to be happy. You shall shoot forth your branches, which is the innate ability of God. It will shoot forth branches. It will expand the God's love will never be commenced at one point, at one distance, at one place. But it goes on expanding forever. You will go on giving branches and you will go on giving fruits. You go on yielding fruits, fruit bearing, dearly beloved brother. You even scientifically also, the fruit will never come out in a single day. In a single day. It's a lot of process behind that. You know, it is to be nourished and the essence is to be from the roots to the stem to the branches and from branches to the flower and from flower to the fruit. There's a lot of process. The fruit bearing demands and occupies a lot of forbearance. It means a lot of patience, a lot of struggle, a lot of tribulation. You're called to suffer, the Lord Jesus Christ says. Today, anybody feels that ministry is bed of roses. Today, anybody feels that it is luxurious. Today, anybody feels that it's only for the sake of name and fame. They are highly mistaken, dearly beloved brethren. You are not called to be luxurious, but you are called to be suffered for the sake of God. What's the hell of suffering that we people today are facing? If you look at the suffering of the people that are called by the Spirit of God, you know they are lit like candles. If you look and refer to the history of the church, history of the Indian churches and history of the ch church, church history, oh my goodness. Your body horripilates, dearly beloved brethren. They were laid down their lives like mantles for the cause of Christ. What is your sacrifice today? You need to be sacrificing all that you have, dearly beloved brethren. If you don't sacrifice your time, if you don't sacrifice your talent, if you don't utilize your Wealth and health in the ministry of God. You are not doing genuine ministry, dear liberal brethren. The Lord is demanding you. You are called for fruit bearing. That is the reason why he is giving an oath to the mountains. Today you may be dried up. Today you may not be giving good fruit. But the day will come and my people come to you. You shall shoot forth your branches and yielding fruits. That is the same oath given to our times also, dearly beloved brother. And today also the Lord is talking to us that we need to be fruit bearing. We need to be fruit bearing. We need to be beneficial for others, to the poor and needy. It is not that you have 10 shirts. If you have 10 shirts, give away nine shirts to others. If you have two meals a day, Give away one meal to others. Millions, millions, lakhs of people outside are suffering from the lack of a single morsel of food, dearly beloved brethren. The Lord is demanding you today. What is your fate? You need to mend your ways. And in second, he gives the second word. You shall be filled, tilled, and sown. Tilled and sown. What does it mean by the Lord's body is tilled? And sown, what is sown there? The love of God is sown there. Because the Lord loves this world so much, he sent his only begotten son. Many Muslims, they question, can you show just one reference that Jesus Christ is God? Can you just show a single reference? They question and they juxtapose in the nets and in the YouTubes to them. I'm giving you three references. 
if you take a reference from Romans 9th chapter 5th verse, Christ came who is over all the eternally blessed God. The eternally blessed God. Number one reference. And number two, the book of Titus, uh, second chapter, 13th verse. Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What else more reference you want uh, to accept Jesus Christ as God? There are so many gods, so many powers in this world. But overall that, uh, Jesus Christ is a great God. Our great God, says uh, St. Paul in the book of Titus. And you also see in 1 John 5th chapter, 28th verse, he says, We are in him who is true in his son Jesus Christ. In his son Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life thereby promised in Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus Christ is knowing and reaching the everlasting life that is bestowed upon Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved brethren, what else more you want better than this? That is the reason why. God has sent his son into the world. His body is bruised. If you have a small wound, you cannot bear with simple pain, excruciating pain all through the body is bruised. Because of the wounds, we are all healed, dearly beloved brother. And the book of Isaiah 53rd chapter expresses what pangs the Lord has taken for all of us, for the Deliverance of all our sins, dearly beloved brother. That is why you will be tilled and sown. Unless the earth is tilled and sown, there will be no fruit, dearly beloved brother. The mountains to the mountains of Israelites, God is giving a word. You will be tilled and sown. Whatever that you sow, the same shall be reaped, dearly beloved brother. And if you sow the love, the more love you will reap in return. If you sow the hatredness, the same you will reap in return. So what is your seed today? You need to take a checkup and you need to take a rectification, dearly beloved brethren. So long that you are not coming into Christ, you will be sowing only hatred and anger. The anger and the hatred will be causing all the evil repercussions, dearly beloved brethren, which will go to destruction and final damnation. But you wish you come to the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ will cling you from all sins. And in return, you will be sowing the seeds of love. In re, dearly beloved brethren, which is most wanted. And in next, uh, finally, the Lord gives you the final word. Your cities shall be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. The ruins rebuilt. This is the mission on which the God has come down. From all the heavens above, dearly beloved brother, and his mission is to rebuild the ruins. You are all ruined. All the mankind are ruined because of one man's sin. The book of Romans says everybody is in ruin and lost the fellowship of God. But by the one man's obedience to God, that is the Man God and God man made man, that is Jesus Christ, because of that second Adam, we are all saved in the will of God. Dearly beloved brethren, that is what the book of Romans 5th chapter 15th verse says like that. By one man offense many died, but by the grace of one man, that is the God man, Jesus Christ, all of us are saved, all of us are saved. Provided that you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, dearly beloved brethren, there's no way. There's no way. From ages, man's quest is to reach God, but he cannot reach by his own deeds and endeavor. Only through the bread of Jesus Christ, the very means to reach God, dearly beloved brethren, today, before it is high light, before it is high time, before it is too late. Why don't you turn to Jesus Christ and why don't you try Jesus Christ? You may try it in so many ways, but God's spirit is penetrating to you and compelling you to come to Jesus Christ. Why don't you try Jesus once? 
the only means of all mankind over ages to reach God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It will cleanse you from all sins for he came into this world only to save you. Dearly beloved brethren, that is the reason why he very clearly describes his oath to the mountains because he wants the creation as a witness for all his mission and purpose. He says, your city shall be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. What is the use for a city when there is no inhabitants? Today, why these weapons, nuclear weapons, one single nuclear weapon is able to demolish and destroy the whole creation and whole universe almost. Every city can be ruined. If it is in ruins, what is the use of this? That is the reason why the very purpose of God is to rebuild the ruins. Already it is in ruins, but by the great love of Lord Jesus Christ, he wants to rebuild it. His mission is to rebuild the ruins, dearly beloved brethren. There's a reason why he calls in the book of Ezekiel to the mountains. Oh, mountains, you listen to that. You shall be fruit bearing. You will yield fruits. And in second, he says, you will be tilled and sown. And in finally, he says, your city shall be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. Mountains from times immemorial are challenged to men, high places. But when they're habitated and kings built forts on high mountains because when it is a city built, when a city is built on the high mountains, it is topmost protected place, topmost high living place, topmost secured place. God wants his people topmost secure to come to his presence which is the high place, dearly beloved brother. Why don't you make a decision today to come to Christ before it is too late? Let us make a small supplication. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord Jesus for the wondrous way that has been calling the people. Oh, Master, to the mountains, you say, yielding fruits is your duty. And how much more it is important for the mankind to yield fruits. We are called for fruit bearing. And Father, you say that uh, we, you must go on be refilled in with the cities inhabited and the ruins to be rebuilt. You came to rebuild the ruins, Master. We're all ruined, but Father, rebuild us, Master. In the, re in the rebuilding and the renovation, you want to make uh, everything new, Father. Make every believer that comes to Jesus Christ be a new creation for the glory of the name. We want and gain whatever we ask for. In Jesus' most precious name, we ask these things. Amen. If you want to know more and more about this rebuilding and the renovation of the spiritual life, you need to attend to any worship service, dearly beloved brethren. You come and watch our worship service which is being held every Sunday from 5 to 6. We cordially invite 5 to 6 singing cells and 6 to 7, one hour short for service. God bless you. May the love of God and grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and with all those that take a determination to be on the part of God. God bless you. Welcome back audience, hope you have enjoyed the service, hope you liked the word, I hope you got blessed, I hope you got edified by the word given by my father, Brother K. A. Sudhas Victor. For all your prayer requests, please contact our phone number 0891275 and our address is C6 2nd Floor Prince Apartments, Tarchitla Palam Vizag 53001.